The word of God declares, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and blessed is the man that trusts in him. I'll say it again. Oh, taste and see tabernacle. Oh, taste and see Facebook. Oh, taste and see YouTube. For the Lord is good and blessed is the man that trusts in him. The word of all also declares to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not unto our own understanding. In all our ways to acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Who is the him? The king of glory. Who is him? The Lord strong and mighty. Who is him? The Lord mighty in battle. Who is him? Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. El Elyon, the most high God. Adonai, our mighty. Master, we come this morning to do no other thing but to lift him up, to give him the glory, to give him the praise that he deserves. I don't know about you, but I am excited. We survived the earthquake this week. We were not under the ground. We are above the ground. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord kept you. Oh, taste and see that the Lord protected your property. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the the Lord all ye people it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord for he is our Savior and he is our keeper David said for thou O Lord are a shield for me you are the glory and you are the lifter of my head and our heads are lifted this morning our eyes are lifted this morning our faith is listed this morning we are alive in him this morning we are moving in him this morning. We are blessed because of him this morning. We are loved because of him this morning. We are in our right minds because of him this morning. God is on our side. If God be for us, who can be against us? We are here at 1274 Utica Avenue, lifting up the name of Jesus. The word of God declares that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And we are drawn here this morning. We are joined to pray. We are joined to worship. We are joined to seek. We are joined to dance. We are here this morning because we love the Lord our God with all our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. We are here this morning to execute to exercise, to share the love of Jesus Christ. We have Elder Gail. She is going to come now, and she is going to take us to the throne of grace, and we are going to engage, and we are going to say amen, and we are going to acknowledge our God because he hears our prayer, and he hears our petition. Amen. Don't she look beautiful? Oh amen, my gosh. Amen, amen, amen. This morning, our scripture reader will be coming from Daniel chapter 3 verses 13 through 18, and I'll be reading from the NIV. And it says, Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my God or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, sitter, lyra, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego replied to the king. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this manner. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty hand. But even, even if he do not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your God or worship the image of gold you have set up. Amen? The word of the Lord is already blessed. 
Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us this morning. Father, we come standing like the three Hebrew boys, saying that we will not bow down, we will not serve no other God or any other idols. Father, we come serving the true and the living God. You are wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You are the Word made flesh. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. You are Jehovah Rapha the Lord that heals. You are Elohim. You are the rose of Sharon. You are the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Father, as I call you, you are my everything. For Lord, without you, I am nothing. So this morning, Heavenly Father, we stand before you in filthy rags, asking you, Lord, to wash us from all unrighteousness. Father, forgive us for the words that we have spoken. For the things that we have said that was not glorifying unto you. Lord, purge us this morning with Esau, and we shall be whiter than snow. Father, as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, and into your courts with praise, Father, we say thank you for another day that was not promised unto us. Thank you, Lord, for covering and protecting New York City from the earth 4.7 earthquake. We thank you, oh God, that there was no calamity. We thank you, oh God, that there was no death. We thank you, oh God, for the building standing up and not crumbling down. We thank you, oh God, for you have sent your angels to take charge over us and keep us in all our ways. But most of all, we thank you, oh God, for your grace and for your mercy. To this morning, Heavenly Father, we want you to bless the Bishop Garns and his family. We pray, oh God, as he come forth to preach your invaluable word with clarity. We pray, oh God, that you will give him a fresh anointing. For your anointing is going to remove the burdens. Your anointing is going to destroy the yoke. We pray, oh God, that your word will come through with power. That souls will be saved. Lives shall be transformed. For at the name of Jesus... Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. Lord, bless the household of faith. Bless those who are sick among us. Bless those who are shut in. Bless those that are even listening to us on social media right now. I pray right now, God, that you will grant unto them whatever their hearts desire. And now, Lord, as we are about to take communion this morning, we pray that you will bless the bread that symbolizes your body. Bless the juice that symbolizes the blood that you shed on Calvary. We pray, oh God, that for those who need healing, they shall be healed. That for those who need deliverance, they shall be delivered. For those who need restoration, they shall be restored. For you are able, oh God, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Lord, during the earthquake, I was reminded with our old time chorus, when my family check on me, when my children check on me, I check on my father, my sisters, and all was well. But you placed this chorus, this old time chorus, that Bishop taught us way back. And it says, Jesus, I'll never forget what you have done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you have set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you have brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget?
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
search the earth below. He's there. I make my bed in hell. He's there. No matter where I go, He's there. where can I go from His spirit? He's there. Where can I go from His presence? He's there. Even in the deepest there. He's there. No matter where I go, He's there. I search the heavens high. He's there. I search the earth below. He's there. I make my bed in hell. He's there. No matter where I go, He's there. where can I go from His spirit? He's there.
God for being everything that we need. This morning we come to worship our Abba Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're a good, good Father. Yes, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like and I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you, yes. That's who I am. That's who I am. It's who I am. God, you're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. That's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, I've heard, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. But I the tender whispers of love. In the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Oh, you're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. You're a good, good father. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by 
That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. serve a perfect God. You're perfect in all of you and that's who you are, my God. Perfect in all to us. Come on, sing it again. God, you are perfect. Sing it one more time. He is perfect, perfect in all, perfect in all of your ways. Ooh, perfect in all of your ways. Too. One more time. So you're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you, yes. Who I am. Thank you for your love, mighty God, yeah. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you always be. That's who I am, that's who I am, that's who I am. We thank you for your love, God. We thank you for your love, God. Our Abba Father, he is a good, good father. That is who he is. From generation to generation, he has just been proving himself to be a good, good father. And because of his fatherhood, we are his children. The Bible tells us that we are seated with him in heavenly places. Tell the person next to you, I'm a king's kid. I'm royalty. I am a part of the royal priesthood. You better be careful how you handle me. I am royalty. Amen, amen. He's a good father. Yes, he is, sir. Stretch across the aisle. Look at somebody and say, I'm glad to see you in the worship experience. I'm glad to see you in the worship experience. Come on, look around at somebody else and say, I'm glad to see you in the worship experience. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, we, want, we like going low and going high, so we want to go there this morning and we want to extend our sympathies to Sister Lydia Argentine. Her brother Keith Lane passed away this morning, and we want to keep her in prayer. Lydia, we are praying for you and believe in God for your entire family. God knows how to comfort and to strengthen. Amen? Amen. But of course, going high quickly, we're grateful to announce to you that Mother Hunt is home. And yes, she, she is. Amen. Yes. And she's watching. And she's watching. Hello, Mother Hunt. Hello, Mother Hunt. <laughs> The church is praying for you and believing yes. God for your continued strength. Somebody say, let's go up. Let's go up. So in going up, there are celebrations. And the first thing we want to celebrate today is for 28 years, the Bruno is ce Brunos are celebrating their wedding anniversary Amen. on April the 5th of yes. 1996. 
Amen. Give it up for my family. Come on. Yes. Toledo and Hortensia, we celebrate you and give God thanks for your life and hope for you to see many, many years to come. Yes. Who do you got? Pastor De Silva and Sister Angelica De Silva, they celebrated their wedding anniversary on March the 26th. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. How many years we got there, Pastor De Silva? 47 years? 47 years. Of Amen. love. Of love. I tell you. <laughs> Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. Amen. And Thank God, God is good. And then we have some birthdays. Yes, we do. And they are in the sanctuary. Okay, so let's go for them. <laughs> On April the 6th, 5th, 6th. No, 6th. Yeah. Sister Elizabeth, could you please stand? Come woo, on, let's woo, celebrate woo, woo. Sister Elizabeth. <laughs> there we go. Happy birthday. And very close to her is Sister Janetta, and her birthday is today. Sister Janetta, stand up. Stand up. Come on. Happy birthday Happy to birthday, you. Happy birthday, Sister Janetta. <laughs> And Bishop, Brother Ricardo Ennis, his birthday is tomorrow, and he will be 85 years young. All right. All Brother right. Ricardo is in the back. Brother Ricardo Ennis, come on, give it up. <laughs> give it up. Yes, yes, yes. We are happy to celebrate life. As we know, Tabernacle of Praise is the fountain of youth. That's what I said. We say. don't look like we look. People don't understand the glory of the Lord that rests upon our lives. The people don't understand that we've been tasting and seeing and we look real good on the inside and the outside. That's what I say. And God is glorifying and God is being magnified and he is satisfying us with long, long, long life. And on that note, let's talk about some long life. Oh. Our bishop. Hey, we just found also Deaconess Be Ethel Beckles. Her birthday was yesterday. So oh, give it up for Deaconess Beckles. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, and we have a huge celebration yes, we coming do. up this year. I say it's the celebration of the year. I hope you all join me as I well. agree. I agree. Amen, I agree. amen, amen. <laughs> we have the awesome pleasure to join with our bishop. Woo! Our bishop, Bishop Eric D. Garns, yes. as we celebrate some major milestones in his life. Yes. On November 14th mm -hmm. of 2024, we get the honor to celebrate with our bishop his 60th mm -hmm. year <laughs> of life. 21st. Uh, uh, well, you know, I think 60 is major. It is it's major. I, listen, for the time y'all decide to publicize my number. Hello, hello. I'm I've got hits them. all across <laughs> Facebook and everything. Says you look You're good. Sure, that's your number. I said yes. He said, "Negro, whatever you do, it, <laughs> keep it up." That's what it is. And we we know that this is awesome. It's not only his 60th birthday, but we get the opportunity to celebrate hey. his yes. 40. Hey man, hey man, hey man. So his 40. If you can't years, dance, don't come. <laughs> Anybody that can't dance, do not come. Amen. Amen. 40 years of ministry and 30 years of episcopacy. Yes. We are so honored to be able to celebrate yes. with you, sir. And we want to let everyone know. You are all invited. Yes. Please go to the website, www.topcathedral.org. Please, we ask you to visit. And if you're like me when you get there, please scroll. Scroll until you see this. This same um, uh, advertisement that's on the, the graphic, that's on the television screen until you see that. When you click on that, you will be able to go in and find additional information. Amen. What's the important information? The uh, cost um, that we're asking you to contribute to attend the function, but also you will see the discount. If you want to have a table, purchase a table, you'll get directives on how you do that. Amen. So we invite you all and we look forward to seeing you you know, I'm already starting my shopping, you know. Because, <laughs> you know. Uh, I have a skirt already. You do? Yes, I okay. have a skirt already. All right. <laughs> we'll be there. But, um, or yeah. Yes, 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 yes.
So, Bishop. Oh, but before you do that, since you do sorry. that, uh, I've been getting also this question of that since it's a black tie affair, uh -huh. people think that it has to be black and white. Uh -huh. A black tie affair does not mean yes, black and white. Yes, yes. A black tie affair is an elegant affair. Yes, Amen. Yes. If it says a black and white affair, that's Amen. different. So everybody repeat, it's a black tie. It's a black, it's a black tie. Not a black and white. Not, not a black, black and white. If you choose to wear black and white, it's up to you. Amen. But black tie means you choose whatever you want to wear. Just wear something <laughs> in order to get in. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We Amen. have so much to celebrate. Now, everyone in this sanctuary knows who we are dealing with. We are dealing with the Energizer Bunny. There are so many compartments to Bishop's life. And in this season, we're going to take advantage of getting a sneak peek into his life in all three areas that we are celebrating. And this morning, Bishop, if we were to inquire into your life as a man of God, as a husband, as a father to many of us, we really want to know when did you first get saved? When did you give your life to Jesus Christ? I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ at the age of 10 years old. However, I really committed myself to the Lord somewhere around 19, 20, yeah, about 19, 20, near to 21, because it's one thing when you first accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you're in your youth as 10 years old, you kind of have an understanding, but you're not all together there. And then when I got to college seasons and getting away from the, the traditional Christian home, church, home, church, school, church to a function, church, home. Everything was church, church. Anybody know what I'm talking about? After a while, I was like, ah, okay, we done. <laughs> and I was moving my way out, if you will, and just hanging out and chilling. And the long story short, the real conviction came as I was making my way from a club. <laughs> It's your mother and your wife, sir. Uh, the two it's of them your, up there. Yeah, it's your mother and your wife. The real <laughs> conviction came as I was making my way from the from a club. I was I paid my fare to get into the club and enjoy the evening, mm. and I was the one with the car. Okay. So I didn't have to worry about designated driver because drinking and me was never a friend anyway. <laughs> you can keep that, and so on. However, on my way home, before I could leave the club and enjoy rather the club, I paid the fare like Jonah paid to get on the ship. Shit. And then my feet became lead. Wow. It could not move. Wow. Now you know that's not me because my Let's feet can that. move. <laughs> and it wouldn't move while I'm in there. And I'm like, well, first of all, God, you could have allowed me not to pay to get in <laughs> and to save the money. And the music and everything is going on around me. And it's like, I'm here by myself. I, like no one saw me and I didn't see them. Next thing you know, I was out. It felt like it was an hour. But it was less than that. Amen. I ran back to my car, and all it was them but tears and tears and tears. And my friend Eve and um, Ricky, her and her and Ricky, hitting the glass because I'm I'm there crying in the car. They're trying to figure out what What's in the going world's on? going on. <laughs> and I remember hearing one last sound, Ricky with his fresh mouth, who turned and said, "Ah, oh, that Jesus thing got hit." <laughs> wow. <laughs> Those are the words he said. He said, that Jesus said, thing got him. Amen. Because as much as I would amen. hang out with everybody, they kept saying to me, but you don't belong with us. You, wow. you, you belong with Jesus. Yeah, you, wow. And I was like, yes, I do. Yeah, I'm trying to fit in. He said, nah, mm -mm. just a matter of time. And when it hit me, that was it. I said, good night. God. I'm done. That was your Damascus <laughs> road. We Damascus all have a Damascus, Damascus road. Yes, amen. 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 So we are moving along. KIC. Yay! Yes, yes, yes. Kick. Everybody say the Kickway Experience. The Kickway Experience. Remember, as I shared with you, we were under the United. Now we are under the Kickway Experience. And the Kickway is taking place on July 31, August 1, and August 2. We are going to be in Stockbridge, Georgia. I'm going to ask you to call all of your colleagues and friends that are in the Georgia area. I want them to be supportive with us in our fellowship. It is the first one. We do not, we're not calling it Convocation. I've deliberately chosen not to use that term. You know me, try to be unique deliberately. You are, you are. I want to create something else. 
And I am using the term for us, the convergence. Everyone say the convergence. The convergence. It means the coming together and the unity of a people under one umbrella, but from different streams. Why did I choose that? Because our motif is not just church. Our motif is also business. Look Amen. at somebody and say, we do business. We do business. Come on, look at somebody and say, we do business. We do business. So we cover churches and we cover business. And we want everyone to understand and feel a part of. If you say convocation, it usually has the understanding of just church. But there will be seminars for the business community, connections with the business community, symposiums with the business community, as well as worship experience in the services in the evening. I'm asking everyone, mark the date. More information is coming. July. 31st, that's a Wednesday, Thursday, and a Friday, and we will be in Stockbridge, Georgia. Our vice presiding bishop will be hosting us at his church. We will not be in a hotel. We will be in the church. I've chosen also to have our fellowship for worship in the church. That helps to save a lot of expenses, by the way, giving the hotel a whole bunch of money unnecessarily, and the body of Christ gets to keep it. Say, let's go. Let's go. Say, the kick way. The kick way. So when you see this and you see it coming across, you can go online. You can go online at thekickway.org. But please keep in mind, share, 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 like, keep spreading it all throughout. Amen? And this Saturday, April the 13th. Now, the last item for you this morning is I need your support. Everyone, media, audio, ushers, everyone, we're going to be present this Saturday. Everybody say this Saturday. This Saturday. We're going to anoint and to bless and install, rather than anoint, we're going to install Overseer Anthony Aubrey Ferguson as an overseer in the Kickway experience. Yes. And it's going to take place right here at Tabernacle. We're looking for your support. Please do your best to be present in the house of God. And it starts exactly 10 at 10 a.m. All right? 10 a.m. You know we don't have long services, but we have the presence of God with us. All right? Amen. All right. Just a friendly reminder, tomorrow is Bible class on Zoom. So you see how full this sanctuary is? That's how my computer screen is going to look tomorrow with all you beautiful faces to the left, to the right. Yep. That's Just right. don't sit beside Lady Garn. She's going to get you in trouble. <laughs> FYI. Okay. Okay. Are there any first time attendees with us? If this is your first time worshiping with, worshiping with us this morning, would you please stand? Let's see if people did their homework. Did anyone bring a homework together? All right. Yeah. All right. Come on. Give it up for our first timer. Yeah. Welcome to our worship experience. It is Welcome. a joy to have you. It, we are so glad that you're present with us, and we pray that your life would not only be moved and changed, but that everything you desire from God, God will grant it according to your heart. Amen. Those of you that are near my brother, give him a hug, give him a handshake, tell him happy to be in the worship, glad you're here. Amen. Amen. Elder Grant, she's up. Elder Grant. <laughs> Amen. Let's welcome Elder Grant, who's coming now to the ministry of giving. It's right here. Praise him, praise him, praise him, keep praising him. Keep praising him, keep praising him. Praise him. I praise him in my slowness these days. But thanking God for all of you. I come this morning to talk about giving. Let's have that conversation. Have that conversation with me while I have that conversation with you. It's not an easy thing to swallow, so if you need to, take a swallow that lump in your throat. <laughs> it's called giving. The blessings are on us. Say that with me. You don't sound like you believe it. You don't sound like you believe it. The blessings are on you, I say to you this morning. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 7, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your wound will be blessed, and the crops of your land, and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks. Some of anybody in here own livestock? God said somebody in here owns livestock. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. The kneading trough is that, that table or tray that 
you put your bread on and you need your, fl your, your flour to make bread and you put yeast in it and you leave it there, guess what? To get to swell. To swell. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. Authorship, Moses. I heard a song yesterday by Donald Lawrence titled, The Blessing of Abraham. And how many would agree that just two lines of a good gospel or a good hymn can strike a fire in your heart or it draws your attention closer to what God is saying through the psalmist. How many would agree? Well, if you listen to music like me, I listen in parts. I listen for instrument sounds. I listen for words. Maybe I hang around my sister too long. <laughs> However, I was the one that she told, my sister used to play the piano, it was me, and she would sing, sing along. In those two lines, I heard in the ad-libbing, the blessings are on you. The blessings are on you. And it struck a chord. So the question this morning is, so what does this have to do with giving to God, Elder? Thank you. Thanks for asking. The answer is it has everything to do with God. Everything to do with giving. If you would just look on your left and your right and see what God has done. Look, look beside you. Look, what, look, 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 look. See what God has done. Then look around you at the insides of the walls. Look around your perimeter. If you've been here at the top, at the top for the past 25 years or more, then you see the overflowing blessings. Overflowing meaning how many ways God has moved in our lives and blessed us and has changed the order of things since we have been here at the top. Say shift. Still, the blessing is on us. My friends in Christ this morning, we do not stay the same. God is on the move and God is in every detail. The second verse to this song says, wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever you touch is anointed to grow. You are the seed by faith. Receive the blessing of Abraham. Receive the blessing of Abraham. If I were to challenge each of you this morning by asking you to write down a blessing on something, and I said to you, write down a blessing that God has recently done, most of us would write down two, maybe three. And that deserves God's attention because he freely gives. And how do we get God's attention? By giving. Giving to God the best part of us for his goodness that has been in our lives. And also remember, here at the top, at the top, we believe that giving is honoring God, and it is also an act of our worship. As I mentioned earlier in Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 7, obedience is key. It is key in showing God we love him, but sacrificial giving shows God how much. Shows him how much we love him. So in this season, as we embark on the Gideon 1274 project, May we all, all, all find ourselves opening our hearts and our wallets a little bit more to give the best of ourselves in the giving. And we'll do that in order to take ownership here and advance the kingdom of God. Amen? In Malachi 3... lost my place. 10 to 12. Giving is the one thing God tells us to test him in. Test him. 
Prove him. See what God will do. Go the extra penny. See what God will do. Give the extra dollar. I know, Bishop, but we got to give dollars. <laughs> and see what God will do. <coughs> the key here is extra. Just go a little extra for God. There's many things happening in every household. I realize that. But one thing we should never do is hold back the blessing to God. So one last thing as I walk away. <laughs> Say with me. The blessings are already on us. Look at somebody and tell them the blessings is already on you. Come on, look at somebody else and say, the blessings are already on you. Give God a hand clap of praise. We want to thank all of you. So many of you have already started last week for the Resurrection Sunday for Easter. So many of you have started giving toward extra on the Gideon 1274. Put your hands together for those of you that are starting. Started because people have asked, Can I? The date was a little heavy for me. Can I move on or can I keep giving toward it and break it up? And the answer is, What? Yeah. What is the answer? Yeah. We need your support to build back up the coffers we're going to use. We're using what we have and liquidating in order to us to do this a best way to get out of it because the key is to extinguish what we're going to be doing completely so that we have nothing, no payments here, and everything else will be up yonder to what we're doing for on the other side. Amen? So thank you in advance for your giving. Please make sure when you're given the Gideon 1274 project that you use one of the envelopes that they have. If you choose to do it electronically, it is separate from tithe and offering. Look at somebody and say, do not mix up tithe and offering. Please, that is completely separate from tithe and offering. And you must use the memo section electronically. Don't forget, use those memo sections. If you're like me, I like to use the memo section because it lets me know what everything was spent for. Anybody like to do that like me? Thank you so kindly. So it's important to do that. It helps you keep your uh, track of how finances are. It's time to give. Let us prepare in giving unto the Lord. If you desire also first fruit, please stop me when you come forward so I can pray over you. I can pray over you while you are up front here. The ushers are coming through the aisle. The finance team is making their way to the front. Please receive them as they come. If you would like to give electronically, physically with your actual card here in the building, please feel free to do so. The finance team will be on the left and the right to receive you accordingly. To those of you online, thank you for your support. Some of you also, by the way, hey, can I have your attention to those in the sanctuary? People online also gave and are giving toward Gideon 1274. I just want you to be aware of that. Amen? Because they believe in what we are going to do to possess this particular property after being here for so long. We asked for it and they would not give it to us. Now God opened the door. God has given it to us. Amen? What an honor. So listen, let's get us to give. If you give first fruit online, please let us know also what that is in the memo section accordingly. And if you're giving Gideon online the same thing, use the memo. We thank you, onliners, for your support. Minister Brown keeps in contact with you and connects with you. And we're so grateful for the ministry of God in her life. And she enjoys connecting with you and you with us. Let us also know your prayer request onliners. Let us know that too so that we can keep you in prayer. Amen? Are we ready to give unto the Lord? Let me, uh, you didn't say that the way you need to say it. Let's say it with some more vigor. Are you ready to bless the Lord? All right, all right. As you prepare in giving, make sure, matter of fact, just look around you and say, please just make sure you're a giver. Ask somebody, please make sure you're a giver. Challenge them. You don't want any stingy spirit getting on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet, face the outer aisles. After the giving, we prepare for the word of God in communion. Amen. Face the outer aisles. Rub somebody with your money on their shoulder and say, I speak money in your life. Come on, rub somebody else. Say, I speak money in your life. Make one more affirmation. Say, money is coming this week to you. Come on, shut, rub your money. Rub your money on somebody. Say, money is coming this week to you. 
keep an eye on your bank account. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Ushers, send the worshipers in their giving. Let's prepare for the word of God. Let's go. Let's continue to worship in this house. Hallelujah. He's been so good to us. He's so 
serve a great God. We serve a great and mighty God. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do.
Great are you, Lord. We serve a great and mighty great God. Stretch your hands out before the Lord and just serenade him one time with that. It is your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise is your breath in our lungs. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's recite our affirmation of faith for the receiving of God's word. Together we read. Together, let's go. This is my Bible. So today I commit to do I want to read in your hearing two scriptures, two sets of scripture. I'm going to read Daniel 3, 13 to 18, read it earlier today. Then I'm going to read Isaiah 48 and 10. Daniel 3, 13 to 18 says, The Nebuchadnezzar in furious rage commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up. Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into the burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods uh, or worship the golden image that you have set up. Isaiah 48 and 10. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I've tried you in the furnace of affliction. Father, bless your word afresh. Revive our spirit and our soul. Cause a soul to say yes to Jesus. Cause somebody to rethink what they were thinking about you and see it in a positive way. And we thank you in advance for the reviving of us. In Jesus' name, let the Bible people say, Amen. please take your seat. Those of you online, put it in the chat. Those of you in the house, turn to somebody and say these words. The furnace of affliction. Let's try it again. The furnace of affliction. May I suggest to you today as we communicate for this moment that adversity in life should not surprise us. I want to repeat that deliberately. Adversity in life should not surprise us. Let's repeat that loud and turn to someone and say the word. So because sometimes when you talk to each other, that's the meaning of it. You get it in your spirit. Look at somebody and say adversity in life, adversity in life. should not surprise you. There are some people who lose it when adversity comes. Just really just lose it more than what they're already losing it with. And they lose it because it's almost to the point where they don't believe adversity should ever come into their life. Whether it arises from your own sin or from a mistake that we make or from somebody else's, adversity is literally just a fact of life. 
No one wakes up and decides that you want to stand in front of a court. Nobody wakes up and decides that they just want to go to the hospital and, by the way, inject me with drugs. I don't feel good. As often has been said, if sickness was something to be bought, it will never get purchased. Some people think that they should really spare adversities as in the light that adversity shouldn't come to them because they are people or members of the body of Christ. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Repeat after me, adversity is a fact of life. We know that even as we see among our royal people in the, in the British and in England, with what they deal with now, the king wait all these years to finally get to the throne. Only to be struck with cancer after all these years. Unbeknown to the public, by the way, if you don't know, the, the queen died of cancer. And so, but you didn't know because for public presence, they propped her up well. Amen. This is facts. This is not, tr this is not opinion. It's facts. And so on. So we saw her come with that nice little cane. They rolled her up as close as they could. And then she walked the rest of the way. They're all for public presence. At the end of the day, affliction hits everybody. Caitlin now decides to publicly give her diagnosis of the challenge that she's dealing with. I wish they would leave the woman alone and let her have time with her family and her children to get herself back together. But it's to prove at the same time, affliction would catch everyone. Tell somebody else right next to you, affliction is a fact of life. But the scripture teaches us, with a, it tells us in the text that I read, Isaiah 48 and 10, that I have tried you in the furnace of affliction, which indicates to me for Christ that that's tried, uh, is being tried and we are being tried, that we've been tried indicates that we are going to go through something in life and that no one would ever be exempt but it's in the trying of the affliction that we see who people are. Some people crack up when trouble comes. They don't know how to hold it together. Some people lose it completely, fall out, and can't function. While there's some of us that when affliction comes, it's not easy depending on the level of the affliction. But we fight our way through. Do I have any fighters in here this morning? Let me just double check. Keep your hands up so I can see who I'm talking to. For those of you who are not a fighter, I hope you're sitting next to a fighter. And that the spirit of fighting to go through gets on you. Because afflictions will come. You don't just fight physically. You have to fight mentally. You have to tell yourself on a daily basis. Throughout the day, some of us have to literally look into the mirror and remind yourself, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I will get through this challenge that I am going through. My rent will be paid. This body is going to get healed. I am going to live a successful life. I am going to conquer. My child is going to get delivered. My child will not be in jail for the rest of their life. This child is going to get... You have to continuously tell yourself that. You have to feed yourself with your faith. That's why your consistency in coming to the house of God is so important to keep hearing the word of God. Because faith cometh by hearing. And by the hearing of? And the more you hear the word of God, the stronger you get. Because adversity is sitting at the door waiting. For those of us who are, are, who are accountable, hardship is often a crucial element of our eventual being made perfect. In other words, it's the hard challenges of life that has actually matured us to where we are. You realize that if everything went smooth and nice, you would not have become who you have become. You would have still been the Edith Bunker to the Archie. Yes, there. Yes, there. And going along. But it is your strength in God going through what you have been through that has made you who you are. If we are willing, God will teach us to act as God acts rather than simply just begin to 
give in on things. I believe that the challenge of overcoming and growing from adversity appeals to us when God presented his plan of redemption in the pre-mortal world. We should approach the challenge knowing that our heavenly father will sustain us. Without God, listen to me carefully, without God, the dark experiences that we have suffered, the adversities that tend to bring despondency, despair, and even bitterness, we would have given in had God not been on our side. Thus the text says, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? With the divine help, ultimately consolations replaces pain. With the divine help of God, peace has replaced turmoil. With the divine help of God, hope has replaced sorrow. With the divine help of God, comfort has come in the midst of the challenge. And we have learned that God will convert trials into a blessing. And God will give us beauty for ashes. That's what Isaiah told us. He will give us beauty for ashes. For your hard times, he will bring some beauty out of it. For the challenges, he will make you smile in the day to come. His promise is not to spare us of conflict. His promise is to preserve us. In the conflict. Repeat after me. His promise is not to spare me from the conflict. His promise is to preserve me in the conflict. He will console us in our afflictions and he will consecrate them for our gain. For that which has been a pressure is God coming in to be an ease. Let us consider the meaning of the furnace of affliction. Why? Because to understand the definition and understanding affliction would help us to understand why it's okay to em embrace it rather than to push it away. Because in the time of Old Testament, a furnace was a crucible for melting and refining silver. It was the furnace where gold will be melted down. The word is used figuratively in scripture. To mean severe and grievous affliction by which, listen, God purifies and proves people. We see who you really are, I repeat, because you are in the furnace. Let me see if I can use a Panamanian twang for those of you who might have to be careful of that, so I gotta define it well. But I, if you have on, you want me to believe you are wearing gold. <laughs> but instead, you're wearing fantasia. You can figure that out by the way I use it, right? <laughs> Hashtag fake. But you want me to believe you were in gold. And I put you in the fire. That's when I'll see whether you're wearing gold or hashtag fake fantasy. Or you want me to believe you're wearing gold. Go on in the shower. And keep wearing that for a little while. And we'll see that little green start to roll around your neck. And we'll see that that is not gold. We get to know who you are when we put you in the fire. It's easy for you to come into the house of God on Sunday and develop and become a consistent worshiper. But then when you come in, you're praising and you're clapping and everybody is singing and shouting. But now hell has breaking loose. And we got to get five different parishes of group people to go to get you out your house to get to the house of God. Your daughter got pregnant and you done lost your mind and you can no longer praise God because she got pregnant. Listen, get over it. She's not the first to get pregnant outside of wedlock and she will not be the last. Or is it because you were condemning other people and now that it happened in your house? Now that it's in your house, you feel shame for how you were handling everybody else. Look at somebody and say, hashtag no judgment. Learn to live your life and stop judging folks. 
You never know when this will come into your house. No one is exempt. We always can tell who you are based on how you handle yourself when things are going on in your life. You can repeat scripture like there's no tomorrow. You know the Bible from Dan to Beersheba. And now you're going through hell. You can't remember how to pray. How is that? That means you have words superficial, not depth of your soul. That means the word has not found itself in your system. You've simply operated with recitation and you have a good memory. I don't want to have just a memory. I want to know that when hell breaks loose, I got enough God inside of me that I can remember what the Lord said. I'll be with you in the morning, in the midnight, in the hour. I will never leave you and never forsake you. I want to have enough word in me that when I cannot open the Bible, God brings it back to my mind. In the furnace of affliction is a sermon that teaches people that we go through difficult times in our lives and others sometimes will judge us, but we are still able to trust our God to bring us through amidst the judgment. The fiery furnace is one of the classic images from the Bible and it represents, listen to me carefully, the fiery furnace actually represents the victory of people standing up for what they believe. And refusing to bow because oppression has come. The fiery furnace actually represents a victorious people who refuse to bow to the enemy just because financial issues has hit their home. The fiery furnace represents people who can stand up in victory and still trust their God even when a divorce has presented itself. The fiery furnace represents God, a people who are strong and can operate in victory. That after the divorce, he's left you with four children to raise, no income. But somehow, when you look back, you made it. Every child ate. Every child had food on the table. Every child had clothes on their back. Every child has went to school. Some of them have graduated without a father. But God gave you the strength. Look at somebody and tell them, if I ever tell you my testimony, you'll fall out. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, if I ever tell you my testimony, you'll fall out. We tend to hide our testimonies, the real testimony. We try to hide and make people believe I had a great life. Everything was wonderful. He was always there, always supporting. Everything was, no, it wasn't like that. I had to get two jobs. I had to live with my mom. My mom had to help me raise the children. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? It is things like that would encourage somebody else. It says, if I can make it, you can make it. One of the worst things you can do is give in to the enemy. Make him see you fold up because of what pressure has come through your life. And some of it came not because of God. It came because of our own bad decisions. So stop blaming God for everything. God was the one that sent various messages to say, don't marry the Negro. Yes, he did. Grandma told you, I don't like him, you know. Something not right. I don't like that family. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Come on. I got to say it like that because that's how you're going to understand it. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? And you still went out. She don't know what she's talking about. She lives her life. I don't live mine. Next thing you know, oh, God, I should have listened to grandma. (laughs) At the end of the day, regardless of whether it was your mistake, whether it was your push, whether it was your pride, God was still with you. We make mistakes every day and God doesn't disappear on us just because we make mistakes. Afflictions come because they mean to discipline us. They come also while it disciplines us. If we are building our faith, it encourages us to follow God and Christ through the dark and difficult moment. When a person goes through a sudden divorce, it is a dark and difficult moment. 
to wake up one day and enjoy a great honeymoon and a great life and a great marriage only to wake up five years later and he no longer or she no longer wants to be there. To wake up one day and your child is fantastic and the next day you wake up, the child is rushed to the hospital and has a stroke. Things happen that none of us ask for. But somehow you endure. Because why? God refines us in the fire. God helps us in the fire. The flames in our lives sanctify us and they draw us to God. They draw us to God in ways that we would never have drawn to God had not something happened in our life. Majority, statistics has proven that the majority of people that have come to know Jesus Christ has come to really know Christ as a result of a challenge that has happened in their life. It caused them to pray more. It caused them to fast more. It caused them to read the word of God more. It caused them to seek God's presence. And now, as a result of that, God now got our attention. May I suggest to you that in the time and the season of a furnace of affliction, there is a struggle to breathe. Repeat after me. There's a struggle to breathe. Have you, how many of you watch, um, you know, they got Chicago Med, Chicago PD, and Chicago Fire. All right. How many of you watch those three every now and again? All right. Thank you so kind. Those are the real people around. All right. I happened to be watching yesterday while I was pulling this together. It was so ironic that I was watching Chicago Fire. And I noticed as the fire people were going in, they don't just go in. First of all, they assess before they go in. They also know what might be meeting them before they go in. They're called the bravest because they know that they can die at any second going in. But there was something that really caught my attention, strangely enough, as many times that I've seen it. When they go in to help someone and they are fully armored, put on the whole armor of God, they have an oxygen item around their face. They go in breathing. They are in the midst breathing with an intent to come out breathing but they can only help those who are in the furnace who are taking in the, uh, the the smoke inhalation as long as they have the proper oxygen on their own face what does that tell me God tells you if you build up your spiritual development when you go in you will not suffocate if you build up your life through your prayer life, through your preachment, through the preachment, through your faith, through the word of God, studying and take the word of God as your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner. By the time you go through something, you will be able, whoo, whoo. So everybody else is struggling to breathe and you're welcome. You're not, no, no, no. I got enough oxygen of God inside of me. Even in the plane, they tell you that if that oxygen piece ever drops out, put yours on. You don't have to worry about that. You know I'm going to put mine on first. I'll turn Lady God, you got yours. <laughs> you struggle to breathe in the furnace of affliction. You often feel like you cannot go on when you're in the furnace of affliction. You wonder how you keep going to yourself and you wonder how you endure the grace just to get through. But you struggle to breathe because everything around you is toxic at the time that you're in the furnace. The air is poisoned. And sometimes the air is not the natural air. It's the air of people's breath in your spirit. The toxicity, the toxicity of people who don't have a good mindset towards you could damage you much more than the fire you are going through. The Bible said that the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And that the tongue is the only element of the body that cannot be tamed. God knows there's some tongues of some folks that I would love to have tamed. Y'all sitting in here right now, I'm looking at some of y'all. I just won't call your name. You know I ain't lying. Say amen, everybody, so everybody would know it's you. 
People have not learned that their tongue is a weapon. Just most recently, I might as well go there real quickly with my time. Just most recently, someone was fellowshipping right here in the worship and enjoying Jesus. They hadn't been seen for a while. And the, la- the only thing somebody could think to ask them is, well, 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 you have a child? When y'all gonna get it together? Wow. I mean, give me the royal breaks. What business is that of yours? That's the only thing you could say to somebody that you haven't seen for a while? Whatever happened to, hey, how are you? Just glad to see you, hug you, and keep it moving. Look at somebody and say, just say hello to me and keep it moving. Come on, look at somebody and say, please, say hello to me and keep it moving. I can't help me be Latino, Caribbean for a quick minute, but to see somebody, box you now, you're vexed. I have to say, I'm sorry, onliners who are American and don't understand what I said, I'm so sorry. Y'all understand what I'm saying here. There you go, now you want to run to Bishop. Why are you running to me for? You should mind your business. And what's worse, it's when it's leaders and elders of ordained people who, when you are in leadership, I need you to understand something. You need to learn how your bishop operates. I don't ask people their business. You don't have a right to ask anybody their business. Let me hear that again. I'm going to take your leadership away and take your collar away too. You got to learn to let people breathe. They're already in the furnace of affliction. They're trying to catch their breath. I can't think about the future because you're in the furnace. You can't catch your breath because you're in the furnace. The flames in our lives sanctify us, though, to make us draw closer to God while we are in the furnace. And I know God is my only hope, so I need to engage with God. But if God be my only hope and I have to engage with him, then I need this fire to do what it needs to do, to literally purify the infirmities and the impurities and take them out. God is using the fire to get rid of the stuff that I don't need in my life. There are things and people that we come and we believe we need them in our lives. Drop, watch them drop dead and see if you don't keep living. I can't go on without you. I promise you I would. When you're in the fiery furnace, nothing matters but God. Can I say that again? When you are in the fiery furnace, nothing matters but God. What I do that I notice is I breathe normally. And I hold on to my God while my heart is pounding. My lungs is gathering breath from God while I'm trying to catch my breath in the situation. And I find a place to laugh. Because laughter is a medicine. For those of you who don't like to laugh, you're in a bad place of life. I watch Steve Harvey and Family Feud just to laugh. I do. At the end, my, most of my days, that's the times I end it with family feud, just to laugh. After you've been through a whole day of business and hard talks and disappointments and ups and downs, I need a laugh. So you listen, and then if you stay up late, late, you listen to Stephen Colbert go off on the orange man. Because you need laughter. Me- laughter, again, I repeat, according to the word of God, is what? A medicine. Because nothing matters but God when you're going through. Passages that I've read, I've passed by them in a hurry, but they come back to me in the time that I'm in the furnace. I didn't even remember certain scriptures, but because I'm in the furnace and I studied so much and I've read so much, those words come back to my spirit just when I need it. And I begin to understand Jeremiah 15 and 16 that said, that tells me your words were found and I ate them. And your words became to me joy, and they delighted my heart. You see, when I wasn't in the furnace of affliction, those words had little meaning. When I wasn't going through something, prayer didn't mean that much. But now that I'm going through, I feel something different. I get closer to God. 
And what else does it do? Because I get closer to God, repeat after me, more alive I become in the fire. Ah, in other words, the more I'm going through, the closer I'm getting to God, the more alive I feel. Instead of feeling like I'm dying because the fire is supposed to burn me and kill me and destroy me and bring me to ashes, my closeness to God allows me to feel alive in the fire. Fire is breaking out, but I'm still praising God. Fire is breaking out, but I'm still worshiping. Fire is breaking out, but I'm still singing. Fire is breaking out, but I'm still rejoicing. Fire is breaking out, but I'm still coming to the house of God. Fire is breaking out, but I'm still tithing. Fire is breaking out, but I'm still giving. Fire is breaking out, but I'm still moving. I'm moving because I'm more alive with God. While you think fire is about to kill you, fire will not kill you what is supposed to purify you. I cannot adequately describe every moment of my life while going through fire. But time also feels like it stands still when you're going through the fire. But I still get dressed. Woo! I still get dressed. I still get up in the morning. I still get to my shower. I still make myself look good even though I'm going through the fire. I still make sure that I look decent and presentable even though I'm going through the fire. It seems like nothing is going on, although something's going on all right. But because of who I believe and who I trust, I am in the furnace of affliction. I am overwhelmed, but I don't stop praying. I ask God for a peace that passeth all understanding. My soul clings to the dust, and God gives life according to his word. But not only do I feel more alive when I'm in the fire, I feel more connected to God. But wait a minute, why wouldn't you want to be connected to God outside the fire as opposed to being connected to God in the fire? But you see, if I build up my development with God and I'm connected with God, regardless of what I go through, I will be kept. Because God and I already have a relationship. So I'm not waiting to go through something for him to now become familiar with my voice. No, God and I know each other very well that by the time I end up in the adversity, which is a part of life, just a whisper of my voice, he knows. If I don't know how to articulate it, the tear on my cheek tells him what I am going through. If my hands can't go up because of the weight of the issue, I can keep it somewhere and say, God, I still thank you. I still move. And I'm connected to him so much that he moves my heavy weight into a light praise. You see, I finally understand what it means to be connected to God all day long. When I'm not desperate. Oh, I don't know if you just heard what I just said. When I'm not desperate. I did not talk to God because I was desperate. I talked to God because I love him. I talked to God because he's with me. I talked to God because his songwriter said, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I'm his own. I remember God's promises that when I walk through the fire, I will not be burnt. I remember God's promises that the flames will not consume me according to the book of Isaiah. I remember as David would say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. It is my connection with God that has brought me to that place. That before the furnace of affliction, I did not know what that meant. But because I went through now, the word of God means a whole lot different to me. You see, there's a deeper portion of Christ, Minister Olivia, that I come to understand that the furnace contains, listen to me, the furnace of affliction contains treasures that I cannot find in a day of ease. Samuel Rutherford said these words, and I quote him, If the Lord calls you to suffer, do not be dismayed. For with the suffering, God will provide a deeper portion of who Christ is in your life. End of quote. Can I say it again? Matter of fact, repeat it with me. Come on, I'm almost through. Repeat after me. Quote, if the Lord calls me to suffer, 
I must not be dismayed. For with the suffering, God will provide a deeper portion of Christ in my life. End of quote. It is in the suffering that he starts to guide you even more. And you feel his presence more when you think he's not with you. He's with you. That's why you're not dead. That's why you haven't given up. You must remember that through affliction, God's test tries and purifies our faith. We must remember that afflictions are the fiery furnace that will purify our faith. We must remember that God brings these afflictions on us to expose sins and mistakes so that we can be better in our maturity. We must remember that God brings these afflictions to us to shape and fashion our character. You don't like it. I didn't say you would. But you need it. I say you must. You have to deal with it. Because there's some area in your life that has not yet been built up. That is necessity for God to work something out for you. It is the challenges that has made us better. Tell the truth. Afflictions. God afflicts us in order to produce fruit from us. Yes, it does. It, he does that so that he can make us better and bear more. I often say if trees could talk, they would tell you that pruning hurts. You ever try cutting your nails and make a mistake and pinch the skin? Or go further into the nail bed than you should have? Does that hurt? If it hurts, raise your hand. Let me see every real paper. Well, it's called pruning. It's called pruning. Hurt is part of life. He lied to me. Get over it. He will not be the last person that lies to you. You lied to yourself too. And you got over that. You didn't hear that one. Let me try it again. You lied to yourself too. And you got over that lie. And you wanted everybody else to get over that lie. Because you told the lie. It hurts. But it's done, when it's done correctly, when pruning is done correctly, it will yield a great amount of fruits. When you cut off the people you need to cut off, you will find yourself excelling faster. You will grow exponentially. I'm telling you, many of us think we need certain people in our lives in order to function. You do not. All you need is God. And for everyone else, you are grateful that they're a part of your life. But you don't need them to survive. That is different with Lady Gone. She needs me. <laughs> to survive. She would die if I'm not present. <laughs> oh, Lord, make me cough now. <laughs> Battling this cold. God's faithfulness towards us is to see us through even when we've put ourselves in. His faithfulness is get him out of it. But, but, but the angel, but you do know they caused that, right? Get them out of it. But you told them, I was the angel you sent to tell them not to do it. Get them out of it. That's the faithfulness of your God. That is the faithfulness of your God. Because he knows exactly how much you and I can bear. I've got no more notes that I've got time. But God afflicts us in order to cause us to know him better. And God afflicts us in order to cause us to love him more. And God afflicts us to prepare us to lead us to his glory. Now may I challenge you with this text. The text says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Or Abed Negro or a bad Negro. Yeah. Stood up and told the man, We will.
will not bow. Which meant regardless of whether you threaten us with a fire, regardless of whether you threatened us to put us in the fire, that doesn't change my belief in my God. Whatever furnace of affliction you're going through, it should never change your love for your God. Because adversity is part of life. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said clearly to them, put us in the fire if you want. One thing is clear, we're not bowing. And if our God deliver us, so be it. And if he chooses not to, at least he delivered us out of your hand. But at the end of the day, you're going to note something about the furnace of life. There is conversation in the furnace. The first set of conversation took place with the man who thought he had control of their lives. The second part of the conversation took place because they trusted their God and they had prayed before they went in. But the main conversation that really highlights in that text is when the fourth man is found walking with them. They are walking and talking with Christ. They're in the fire. They are not burnt. They are walking through the fire. They are not singed. They are moving through the fire and they are having conversation with the fourth man, Christ, at its best. May I challenge you, walk through the fire, but keep having conversation with the God of your salvation. Walk through the fire, but keep praying until God shows up. Walk through the fire and keep fasting until God turns it around. Walk through the fire until the God of your salvation pulls you out of the fire. Don't run out before time. Don't try to avoid problems. They are going to make you better. Stand to your feet. It's going to strengthen you. It's going to encourage you. Because the fire, the furnace of affliction is designed to purify you. And to get rid of the toxicity. The toxicity that is around your life. The purpose of putting things through the fire is so you can separate the elements. Separate the good stuff from the bad stuff so that you can be made completely whole. So whatever we go through, don't just say, it's me. Don't say, why me? That's a famous thing among many of us. Why me? That was my father's nickname. I'm serious. Every time growing up in life with my dad, every time, why me? Like, why not us? Why not anybody? Why not Prince? Princess, what's her name? Caitlin. Why not? Nobody is any different. It's just that what you go through, I might not go through, but I might go through something worse on a different angle. And whatever we go through, it is God's will that we go through it. But I remember the word of God says, he will never give me more than I can bear. So if I'm going through it, I can bear it. It hasn't killed me because you can bear it. You're still standing because you're still, you're that strong. And guess what? You will have a testimony later on. You know that old song that says, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say, I have a testimony. Anybody in here have a real testimony? Let me see your hands again. Online, put it in the chat. Put up the emoji. I have the testimony. Had it not been for God. The furnace of affliction. Affliction is the necessity of life. 
The same way you cannot escape death, you cannot escape affliction. It's going to come in different ways. How you handle it should be the same way. Trusting God until the break of day. And watch God do his work. Lift your hands up, church. Hallelujah. If you're here today, and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, and you'd like to accept him, I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. And say, Bishop, please don't close. I want to give my heart to the Lord. Let me challenge you and let you know, you don't have to have it perfect, because none of us is perfect. Nobody's perfect. All you need to do is say, yes, Lord. Come into my life. Guide me. Direct me. Be the Lord of my life from this day forward. I want to make it official. I want you to come. Before we serve the Lord's Supper and release you, I want you to come. Come. From wherever you are, come. Tell somebody, excuse me, I need to go up. I want him to pray for me today. I want to receive the Lord in my life today. <laughs> Workers, come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Some stand with the elder. Come on. Come on, great Gail. Somebody. Hallelujah. There's a soul up here, church. Come on. There's a soul up here. Let's give God praise. Somebody else is thinking about that. We want you to know you are loved. Tell somebody you are loved. You are loved. You are loved by the power of Christ. You are loved. Nobody can love you like Jesus can love you. I mean it. Nobody, nobody. I don't care how much you were in love for 40 years of marriage. Nobody can love you like Jesus can love you. You are loved. You are worth the living. You're worth being alive. All because of the Christ. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift him up. Come on, church. So go and stand your lips. Our God will bring you out. Yes. He will testify. He shuts the light. Go ask those Hebrews. challenge you today. Clergy, take your place. We prepare ourselves for the Lord's Supper. Those of you online, if you have your juice and your bread with you, we ask you to join us and be a part of the Lord's Supper. We don't have to do it every first Sunday. We choose to do it every first Sunday. Bible tells us as often as you do, we could do it every Sunday like the Christian church if we wanted to. It is our choice. We welcome you to join us. Ushers, send the people to receive the Lord's Supper. Face the outer aisle. Bring your faith with you. I believe that when we partake of the Supper of God, healing is in our bodies. Let's go. Healing is coming to your body. He's in the room. Come on. If I search the heavens, I he's there. Search the earth, we go He's there. I make my bed in hell. He's there. No matter where I go, He's there. where can I go from His spirit? Where can I go from His presence? Come on. Even in the deepest depths, even when the red I go, I search the heavens high. I search the earth below. I make my bed in hell. No matter where I go, where can I run from His spirit?
in the room church oh, 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 oh. He's in the room He's in the room Oh, 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 oh. He's in the room hey. So what can wash away my sin Nothing but Nothing but the blood of what can make me whole again? Nothing but the, the blood, blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me crazy. No water out of my blood. If you hold your bread up high, the Bible declares it was in the night that he took the bread. He blessed the bread. He broke the bread. And he told them to eat. 
Eat this bread in remembrance of me. Eat the bread of life. I speak healing to your entire body. Because no bone was broken in his body. So that every bone in our body can be completely made whole. In the same night, he took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the New Testament for the remission of sins. As often as you drink the cup, those of you online, drink the cup with us. For when you do so, you do it again in remembrance of him. Healing in every fiber of your body now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Got to love first Sunday, boy, I tell you. Hallelujah. <laughs> How many of you would like a bigger cup? <laughs> Stretch your right hand out. As we prepare ourselves to leave, I want to challenge you. Let Christ be seen in you. The hope of glory. May your week be a good week. May doors open that are not yet opened. Prepare your bank accounts to receive finances. And believe God for good health and strength to enjoy the blessings he is sending in your direction. Be a consistent worshiper. Don't let anything get in your way of worship on Sunday morning and bring a friend with you. Now may the saving grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit and sweet communion, rest the and abide with you all. And the people say, yeah. hug somebody on your way out and say, see you. In we hope you have enjoyed the worship experience here at Tabernacle of Praise, the home of Kingdom International Consortium known to us as the Kickway, where the word of God is made available to all and it is the highest focus along with our worship unto the Lord. We pray that you'll consider joining us here in the building at 1274 Utica Avenue between Foster and Avenue D here in Brooklyn, New York. If you're in the area, come on, stop in and join in the hallelujah experience. If you can't make it physically into the house, then join the sanctuary by considering to hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button on all platforms at Top Cathedral. We desire to stay in touch with you and you with us to keep you abreast of all the events that take place within this worship. The doors of the church stay open for you and me. See you as a consistent worshiper.